Magium, an interactive tale. The situation is about to get dire. Let's see how your choices have favored you. As he approaches, I realize that if I don't do something quick, Darren will be forced to fight both the older and younger mage by himself, while also defending me. And he won't have the luxury of using healing spells since they require him to be calm and relaxed in order to cast them. Maybe there's something I can do to help. There's no way Darren can fight the two of them while defending me. Since the younger mage seems to be focused on me, I'll lure him away from Darren and try to evade his attacks for as long as I can, until Darren finishes off the older mage. Kate seems to have gotten the sword-throwing mage's undivided attention. He is constantly sending swords her way from every direction, as she creates walls of ice to block his attacks. We're lucky. With Darren's weakness against weapons and my lack of magical talent, that mage would have probably been the hardest for us to fight. As the bearded mage reaches us, his battle axe clashes loudly with Darren's sword. I see you've enchanted your weapon as well, healer, says the older mage. But how long can you last against a battle-hardened warrior such as myself? He roars and presses his battle axe harder against Darren's sword. As the two of them fight, I dash away toward the forest. As expected, the mage with the daggers is coming right after me. Barry, wait! Darren shouts after me. He attempts to follow but decides against it. He can't afford to avert his eyes from the bearded mage even for a second. He's too dangerous. In the meantime, the mage fighting Kate has managed to surround her with floating swords, aimed at her from every direction. He sends them all at her simultaneously in an attempt to overwhelm her defenses. She quickly surrounds herself with a sphere of very thick ice, and all of the swords, once again, stop into it. As she dismisses the sphere, all the hundreds of swords drop to the ground with a deafening clang. Speed check successful, level one. My plan to lure the younger mage away is working far better than I expected. The mage keeps teleporting after me and trying to catch me off guard, but every time he thinks he's got me in a pinch, I simply dash away with ease. I knew that stat device would come in handy, but I never dared to dream it would be so useful. I feel like I could just keep running like this for hours and not get tired. Boy, what do you think you're doing? Stop fooling around and finish him! He's just an ordinary human! Shouts the mage with a battle axe. Kate seems to have gone on the offensive. She is throwing ice cones toward the other young mage, and he is now forced to use his swords to cut them down, instead of attacking her. As he focuses more on defense, Kate's attacks become more and more relentless. It doesn't take her long until she starts sending hundreds of ice daggers toward her enemy. The mage doesn't seem to know how to use his technique to defend from such a large number of simultaneous attacks. It only takes a small miscalculation on his part to end the battle abruptly as one of the ice daggers stabs him right through the heart, killing him on the spot. No! shouts the older mage when he sees what happened to his eldest son. Taking his eyes off of his opponent was a fatal mistake. Darren didn't waste his chance, and he drove his blade right through the man's chest, his enchanted weapon cutting through the mage's heavy armor like a knife through butter. The bearded mage gave out one last gurgle before he drowned in his own blood. Terrified, the young mage with the dagger tries to teleport into the forest to get away, but his spell's range appears to be limited, and it only transports him halfway there. He tries to make a run for it, but Kate snipes him from the distance with an ice cone through his head, which killed him instantly. It was a gruesome show, but at this point, all I care about is that somehow I managed to make it out of that alive. As he's healing his wounds, Darren looks straight at me, Damn it, Barry. That was too close. We're going to have to think up some strategy until our next fight, or we're not going to last much longer. Yes, I tell him. I think you may be right. After finishing his healing spell, he walks over to Kate. Kate, please explain something to me, because I just don't get it. With the way you were fighting back there, why would you ever ask for an escort? Everyone has their weaknesses, healer. Judging how much you've been struggling this fight, I would assume that, ironically, you are weak against other weapon enchanters such as yourself. But just because I handled these thugs with ease, it doesn't mean I don't have any problems against other foes. No one can survive this tournament alone. Yes, I suppose you're right. Darren pauses. Very well, let's keep going, he says as he heads toward the trees. 
I start to follow him, but Kate stops me in my tracks. She has that very serious look in her eyes. Stillwater, she says in a low voice, in order to avoid being heard by Darren. I saw you fight back there. You may have managed to convince Darren and that bearded fool that you are an ordinary human, but I'm not so easily deceived. I don't know what your game is, but I'm going to keep my eye on you. I I'm not, I start to say, but Kate cuts me off and grabs me by my shirt. Listen to me, Stillwater. I'm not interested to hear your lies. I just want to make sure we're clear on what I think of your little charade. Now are we clear? I could simply reply Crystal, or be snarky and say, not really, could you elaborate some more? Congratulations. It would seem that by your choices of statistical increases and the turn of events, you've managed to survive this battle. But be assured, running away won't always save you. Someday you're going to have to stand and fight. And on that day, I truly hope you're prepared. Magium is an interactive tale. Be sure to vote for the next stage and come back next time to see the outcome.